Are you here to improve your investment strategies? Are you looking for that one article that could help you finalize that decision you were holding off? Well then, get ready to learn more and gain just that subtle extra knowledge to get an edge in the investment business. Because if you're new here, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to The Daily Fortune, a channel where we talk about all the latest news, updates, guides, and strategies related to investment. Of course, with that said, we're going to be discussing a lot about the Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett, The Big Short, Michael Burry, the money tree Kathy Woods, Tesla's very own CEO and eccentric billionaire Elon Musk, along with the rest of the big leagues to learn just a bit more from the professionals. And don't worry, of course we talk about crypto, and we also talk about the best stocks to invest in, along with many tips and tricks on how to handle your finances so you never lose. So before we talk about making money, remember to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell as well to make sure you won't miss a single video. Now let's get started. So in today's video, I'm going to explain to you why Elon Musk wants to buy Twitter, how this will affect you, why he's doing it, and some of the benefits and drawbacks if he succeeds. Are you ready? Well, let's go. Of course, it's unacceptable that Elon is controlling people's minds. That is our responsibility, not his. You've probably seen or heard that Elon Musk is attempting to buy Twitter, right? But if you don't know the whole story, watch this video. Over 2.8 million people voted on his tweet to take Twitter public at $54.20 per share. This amounts to a market capitalization of $43 billion. Twitter's current market capitalization is roughly $37 billion, which implies he is technically offering a $6 billion premium above the sticker price. However, that's not the most intriguing part. Let's look into it. There are around 768 million outstanding shares on Twitter. This is the total number of stocks that are available. There will be $3.2 billion when we multiply that figure by $4.20. You know you're wealthy when you can put in an additional billion just to make a 420 joke. The majority of people, about 83.5%, have voted to make Twitter private. And this is critical not only for Twitter shareholders, but also for people who possess cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Dogecoin. Above all, what does it imply for free speech? Someone said that Twitter is like the internet's bathroom stall. It doesn't contain the most pleasant messages, but because we have to use the bathroom on occasion, reading them is unavoidable. Public companies like Twitter have what's known as a board of directors. A public company's board of directors is elected by shareholders, with one stock equaling one vote. These individuals are in charge of making critical choices like dividends, executive compensation, mergers, and sale of the firm. They also have fiduciary responsibilities, which implies that all of their decisions must be made in the best financial interest of the company's stockholders. They must consider every option provided to them as long as it is financially feasible. And that's where the narrative starts since Elon has been buying Twitter since January of this year. Now he's accumulated 9.1% of the company's stock, making him the company's top shareholder until Vanguard bought a bunch more stocks and overtook it. However, when you become a big shareholder in a company, its board of directors will often request you to join with them. Elon was offered the role, but if Elon joined the board of directors, he couldn't hold more than 14.9% of the firm. He rightfully backed out and informed them he wasn't interested because his goal is to own 100%, for reasons I'll explain later. The board then replied with a limited duration shareholder rights plan, which is exactly what it sounds like. The poison pill is another name for a shareholder's rights scheme, which sounds deadly because historically it was. In the realm of investing, a shareholder's rights plan is simply a strategy for preventing what's known as a hostile takeover, in which shareholders would be able to buy their company at a discount if something unexpected happened. In the case of Twitter, they voted that if someone tries to buy more than 15% of the firm without the board's approval in the future, it will trigger the opportunity for other shareholders to buy the shares at a lower price. This will last until the 14th of April 2023. The sole exception is the person who initiated the shareholder rights plan, which in this case is the buyer, or Elon Musk. And it means that members of the board of directors will flood the market with new shares, reducing the overall proportion of ownership held by the individual doing the buying. 
The idea is that allowing current shareholders to invest in the same firm they've previously invested in, but at a cheaper price, will encourage them to buy additional shares. So discouraging the buyer from paying a premium for theirs. That is why it's extremely difficult and expensive for a buyer to acquire 100% ownership of the company. Another benefit of this strategy is that it allows for bargaining, because if another buyer comes along, they may want to pay a premium and a little more to acquire the company. So if you invest in a firm like Twitter and this happens to you, there are some drawbacks you should be aware of and they are as follows. Here's one disadvantage. New shares will need to be created and if you don't purchase those new shares, the value of what you already possessed will be eroded. I'll give you an example. So we have a fake firm that's valued at $100 in total and had 10 outstanding shares. If you bought one of those shares, you would have invested $10. Assume there's a hostile takeover from another person or company. You now have to increase the number of outstanding shares from 10 to 20. Just because you doubled the number of shares in this firm doesn't mean it's worth twice as much. It's still a $100 firm, which means each stock's worth has dropped from $10 to $5. You could exercise your right to buy those new shares at $5 to lower your cost basis, which is just fancy for the average price you got in at. But if you don't, the value of what you already own has just gone down, which means investors are being forced to buy more shares just to break even. I'm not claiming this will happen to Twitter, after all this is only an example. So don't mix this up with a stock split like the 10 to 1 Shopify recently announced are good by comparison. Instead of 10 shares outstanding, we now have 100 shares outstanding in the example firm. As a result, instead of owning one stock, each shareholder now owns 10. However, the same value theory applies. We're not adding value, we're merely rearranging numbers. As a result, each of my shares is now worth $1 bring the total to $10. So if Twitter is the poison pill that harms investors, the stock split is the placebo pill that accomplishes nothing because even if I have more shares, they still sum up to what they were worth before. Another disadvantage of the poison pill strategy is that it makes it more difficult for other investors to buy the company since they don't want to deal with that trouble. That's why Elon Musk is upset and he wants his lawyers involved because his argument is that the board of directors is failing to fulfill their fiduciary responsibility to their shareholders by making it more difficult for them to make money. And those are the people for whom they're supposed to work. The board's counter argument is that they're doing this to open up future negotiations and make better deals for their investors. The counter argument is that the top 10 holdings of the members of the board amount to less than 0.012%. And Elon's argument is that those people shouldn't be making decisions for the other 99.9% .9 of the shareholders. And that's exactly what's going on. Now let's move on to why Elon is buying Twitter. Elon Musk is interested in purchasing Twitter not to increase his wealth. That's not the reason, because there are many better investments out there than Twitter. And Elon knows it. Twitter is not profitable, and you can see this for yourself by checking its P to E, or the price to earnings ratio. As you can see, Twitter's P to E ratio is simply a dash, a zero because they're not making any money, and they've been trying to figure out how to accomplish it for years. So again, Elon Musk isn't purchasing Twitter for the sake of profit, but rather he's buying it because he wants to take the company private. There are no longer any stocks, shareholders, or board members to slow down the decision-making process. Whatever one man says becomes a very effective technique to make a change. He wants to change Twitter because he believes it's an excellent venue for exercising free speech. He calls himself a free speech absolutist, which means he believes we should allow all tweets to exist in their entirety at all times. Either everyone can say anything or free speech does not exist. If you're updated, you'll know that some people are cheering for Elon Musk to buy Twitter, while others aren't so sure. So here are some of the points for and against Elon's purchase of Twitter. In the case of allowing Elon Musk to purchase Twitter and take it private, is that there is little reason to doubt his commitment to free speech. His option is that we should be very cautious about removing tweets or permanently banning users from the site and that we should allow more transparency and stop the spread of misinformation. Because if people see that certain tweets are deleted, that only certain pieces of information are shown to people, and that people are permanently banned from the platform, that breeds mistrust, which creates conspiracism, which is never healthy. Another reason to allow Elon Musk to purchase Twitter is that he is offering a higher price than the firm is worth. It's currently worth between $43 and $47 per share, and he's proposing $50 $54.20 per share, a 20% premium over its current average price, which is big for stocks. Another reason to allow them to do so is that the board of directors owns only 0.01% of the company, and the argument is that their financial interests are not as linked with those of their shareholders as people believe. 
Finally, it would be a fantastic thing for crypto, particularly for holders of Bitcoin and Dogecoin, and he would most likely combine some sort of payment system or tipping system with Bitcoin or Dogecoin as the currency. But here are some of the arguments against allowing Elon Musk to purchase Twitter. One argument against making Twitter private is that you're handing over the control to just one person. And even if that one person is someone many people respect and admire, it's still a bigger risk because it's being given to one person exclusively, which is a lot riskier than a company that's publicly traded that has some checks and balances with shareholders and board members. Another worry is that it might jeopardize other investors from his other firms, such as Tesla, because Elon has a history of getting into difficulty with the SEC by saying things the SEC doesn't like. So giving him an entire platform could get him into more trouble. And some people argue that it doesn't matter who owns Twitter because even if he owned 100% of it, the SEC would still have jurisdiction over what he says. So he still has to be more cautious. Other people have pointed out that in 2016, Elon cancelled customers' Tesla pre-orders because they were critical of the company in a blog post. While it is Elon Musk's right to refuse service to anyone he wants, some argue that it's no different from how Twitter operates today and that it doesn't exactly inspire confidence that if he were given complete control of the company, he wouldn't use it to silence his critics as he was in the past. I believe it's critical to learn and hear all points of view. Personally, I wish Twitter didn't exist sometimes because I don't believe it's the nicest of places. And I try to keep my opinions about other people, especially those I don't personally know, to myself. But I truly believe Elon Musk wants to protect free speech. And I think it would be okay and cool if he made Twitter private. I believe he could accomplish some really great stuff with it, especially if crypto was included. However, whether or not free speech will be interwoven into the future of Twitter in the way that we all want is something that we'll just have to wait and see. Thank you for watching. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something from today's video. And to get updated with the next videos, don't forget to hit the notification bell. See you next time.